In a previous video, I showed you this, my homemade gear hobbing attachment. A question I was asked a lot was, how do I make my own gear hobs? Here's a selection of ones I've made. And a selection of commercial ones. I make both the hollow type, which fits on an arbor, and this type, which looks a bit like a roughing end mill. I make them from silver steel rod, which can be hardened and tempered. The first part of the process is to grind a cutter from high speed steel. This will be used to cut the hob. But before that, some gear theory. Gears have an outside diameter, a pitch circle, a base circle, and a root circle. The pitch circle is the diameter at which the gear meshes with another gear. And most of the measurements will be taken from this. You've probably also heard the term pressure angle, or PA. This is the angle of the face of the tooth at the pitch circle. For metric gears, this is usually 20 degrees. It's also the tangent angle between this point and the base circle. The hob needs to have teeth with this same pressure angle, and so that's the angle I need to grind the cutter. 20 degrees each side, or an included angle of 40 degrees. This can be done on a bench grinder with an angle attachment. I'll sometimes use a diamond cup wheel in the lathe for better accuracy. Note that I haven't ground any rake on the top surface. This would affect the angle as the cutting edge would no longer be on the center line. This cutter now has a sharp point which I don't want. A small flat has to be ground on the end to match the geometry of the gear teeth. Looking again at the diagram, the height the gear teeth project beyond the pitch circle is called the addendum. For metric gears, this is equal to the module, so for a one module gear, this distance is one millimeter. The distance between the pitch circle and the bottom of the tooth space is called the dedendum. The dedendum is larger than the addendum to give clearance to the mating gear teeth. The dedendum can vary in size, but is typically 1.25 times the module. For small gears, one module or below, it is often increased to 1.4 times the module. The total height of the tooth, which will also be the depth of cut for the hob, is equal to the addendum plus the dedendum. The hob which cuts this gear has the same addendum and dedendum, but they are reversed, with the addendum on the inside. So the cutter which makes the hob needs to have this profile and this size flat on the tip. But how to calculate that? The sides of the teeth are at the pressure angle, in this case 20 degrees. The tooth spacing is equal to the module times pi. So for a one module gear, this is 3.14 millimeters. The width of the tooth on the pitch line is exactly half this, 1.57 millimeters. The width of the tip is this width minus these two distances. And since the addendum is equal to the module, these are equal to the module times the tangent of the pressure angle, giving a tip width in this case of 0.84 millimeters. If that didn't make any sense, the equation is pi times the module over 2 minus 2 times the module times the tangent of the pressure angle. It's worth noting that the tip width is independent of the dedendum size. Also, these corners should be sharp, but a very small radius here is acceptable. But how to measure the tip? 
The sides aren't parallel so you can't exactly use calipers or a micrometer. This can be done with the old ball bearing trick. These two ball bearings are 6mm in diameter and this parallel is 3mm thick, equal to the radius of the balls. I place the parallel on a flat surface with an edge stop. A milling vise is perfect for this. Place the cutter upside down on top, pushing the tip against the stop. And place one ball on each side. Each ball is in contact with the stop and also the cutting edge of the tool, which is at exactly the centre height of the ball. By measuring the distance across the two balls and using a little trigonometry, I can determine if the tip width is correct or needs adjusting. Drawing a line from the centre of one circle perpendicular to the cutting edge, I can draw a right angled triangle here. The length of this line is equal to the radius of the circle, and this angle is equal to the pressure angle. Using trigonometry, I can calculate this length and this length. I know this distance is also equal to the radius, and these two added together gives this length, which forms one side of another similar triangle, from which I can calculate this distance, and I already know this width I'm aiming for. Adding all of these up gives a total measurement across the two balls. Once the cutter is ground to shape, I can start making the hob using the normal screw cutting technique. The actual diameter of the hob does not matter. Bigger is better as the hob will have more teeth, which produces a better result. But large diameter hobs take longer to make and also cost more in materials. I find a good compromise for the size of gears I make is around 20mm in diameter. The two things that do matter are the pitch and depth of the cut. The pitch should be set to pi times the module. The hob I'm cutting here is 0.8 module, so the pitch needs to be 2.51 millimeters. Some lathes have a module threading gearbox, but on mine I have to set the pitch with change wheels and the closest I can get is 2.50 millimeters, but this will be close enough. The depth of cut will be the addendum plus dedendum value, as calculated earlier. I have the compound slide set to 20 degrees, and I'm feeding with the compound hand wheel. So I have to turn it a little further, by the depth of cut divided by the cosine of 20 degrees. I should probably mention this or I'm bound to get comments about it. You might have noticed that the cutter I just used didn't have a flat tip like I described. It had a radius on the point and consequently this hob doesn't have a flat at the bottom of the V but has a radius too. This is because this hob isn't going to cut a gear. It's actually going to cut another cutter that will be used to cut a gear. This is a good example of when I might make a hob instead of using a commercially available one when I want to make something specialised or unusual. The next stage is to cut teeth into the hob using the milling machine. I'm cutting slightly beyond the centre line to give the teeth a small rake angle.
I've kept the teeth quite short, as like a tap, they don't have any clearance on the sides. Commercial hobs are manufactured with this clearance, and it is possible to do it in a home workshop. But as the hob feeds only very slowly in use, there will be minimal rubbing, and it's really not worth the extra effort to relieve the sides of every tooth. The hob needs to be hardened before use by heating it red hot and quenching in oil. It's now very hard but also very brittle, so it needs tempering for an hour, otherwise the teeth could break off. After heat treating it will happily cut mild and alloy steels, but it's important to keep it cool in use, otherwise the hardness could be lost. Here I'm honing the cutting edges with a small stone. The hob is set in the milling machine at the helical angle of its teeth, so that the teeth are in horizontal rows in line with the direction of feed. <laughs> 